Hello and welcome to the shop. Today I have what should prove to be a very interesting turn. This is a piece of sagebrush. It comes from the state of Washington and it was sent to me by Cecil Tingley. Now Cecil also sent me an ink pen made out of sagebrush so I know it can be done and he said it's a little tricky to turn because it's soft but it does turn so we're gonna have a little fun. I think what I'm gonna do is I'd like to make myself a modified mechanical pencil and I believe that's the fun line kit and I believe right here this section from here to here is long enough to do one of those kits so that's what we're going to attempt to make today. Making a modified mechanical pencil is a little more difficult than making a slimline pen. With a slimline pen if you barrel trim away a tiny bit of your tube it's not a big deal because you've got some play in the mechanism and you can get rid of that slop. With the mechanical pencil, you are locked into a fixed length, and if your tube is too short, this just isn't going to fit. So what we're going to do is we measure the length of our tubes, and each of these tubes is exactly two inches. So we got four inches total, and then we have to take into account the chrome ring. This is the sleeve that presses the front and the back section of your mechanical pencil together, and that center trim ring is one eighth of an inch. So we need four and one eighths of an inch for a tube length. What I've done is I've grabbed a piece of tube here. This is just, uh, I buy 10 inch lengths of tube and I've measured it off to four and one eighth inches. We'll cut this little piece off. We will have a tube exactly the length that we need for this mechanism. I went ahead and measured my sage brush off to four and a half inches to give me a little bit of play. Once this tube is cut off, We'll drill the sagebrush out and we'll get it glued inside of this piece of sagebrush and we should be ready to turn. To cut my brass tube, I like to use these little plumbing tube cutters. You can pick these up at any of the big box stores and they're not all that expensive. I think around five, six bucks. I've gone ahead and got my tube mounted inside of the cutter and I'm a little fat of the line. And the reason why is I'd rather cut it a tiny bit too long than take it to my sander and nick it down to the proper size. So we're gonna go ahead and tighten this just a little bit and start spinning this brass tube inside the cutter until we finally cut it. Just tighten the little knob, turn the tube once or twice. And there we go. Another reason I like to leave it a little bit long is see how it sort of flutes the inside of that tube? Here's what it should look like, and here's what it looks like. By taking this to the sander and sanding that back a tiny bit, I'll get rid of a lot of that, that uh, fluting. And now we're exactly at four and one eighth inches. Since I only cut my tube about a sixteenth of an inch longer than it needed to be, there's still just a little bit of fluting on the end of the tube. So what I want to do is I brought my punches over and I'm going to take the quarter inch punch. I'm going to run it through the center of the tube. Tap it a couple times with a hammer. This is easier to do when you're not leaning around a camera. There we go. Now that it's through the end, I like to roll it. Roll it and tap it, and what will happen is notice how loose the punch is now. We have gotten rid of the flute on the end of this tube, and it's ready to be inserted into our blank. I've got my blank chucked up and I ran the drill bit down beside it on all four sides just to try to make sure that I had it perpendicular to the table. It does have a bit of a curve at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start drilling towards the front or towards one side of the blank. Uh, that way as it curves down I should come out more toward the center at the bottom.
My drill press only has about a three inch uh, throw on it. So the bit that I'm drilling with has got to go four and a quarter inches, actually about four and uh, an eighth inches through, through the uh, blank. So I don't have quite enough throw. So we're gonna have to raise it or raise the table to finish this out. Not too bad. Got plenty of room there. Plenty of room there. I've got the sagebrush blank chucked up and I'm ready to start turning. There's a lot of stuff like this that's going to maybe make it look a little weird until it all gets turned off, but it should disappear pretty quickly. Um, got a few inclusions, I guess, where little branches popped out at. We'll have to keep an eye on those. We don't want to do any damage there, but we're just going to take our time and uh, see if we can't shape this up, make a really nice um, modified mechanical pencil out of it. having quite a bit of trouble these occlusions as they're coming out where these little branches were starting you can see the tube I had one come out at the end and I've got this one down here one came out on this end I was hoping just to be able to clean this up and cover that with a clip but then it popped out on this end I'm not really sure how I'm gonna combat that I tell you what let's go ahead I'm gonna go ahead and try to turn it down to the bushings on both ends just to get it cleaned up and then we'll come back and we'll take a peek at it and see if there's something else we can do uh, to this blank to be able to save it. Looking at this pen, the only thing I can see to do is to clean off the front and back edge of the pin. And I've got a couple of walnut cutoffs. I think the walnut might look pretty good with this wood. And I'll put a cap on either end of the pin. I'm not sure what else to do. I mean, this is just mother nature here. There's nothing that uh, I did wrong turning. Um, it's just the way this branch grew. I'm worried about this and losing it. So I think I'm gonna put a drop of CA uh, in here just to kind of hold that together and I may see if I can take something like this one of the shavings and just sort of force it down in there to sort of camouflage that hole The hope is that I got enough in there to where I can sand that and it won't be visible. We're going to find out in a couple of minutes. Let me go ahead now 
and get these two walnut uh, pieces drilled out. Actually, I can just probably drill one of them out and cut it. I'm going to try to keep this, I mean, maybe to about there on the, you know, which is maybe what, a quarter of an inch front and back. I'm going to try to match it up evenly. So let me go ahead and get this drilled and then I'll actually let me go ahead and clean these off so I know how much of this I need. I'll get this drilled and then I'll get a couple of sections cut to fit on the front and back of this pin. With the two ends cleaned up, I'm going to go ahead now and get my walnut drilled out and then we'll come back and get it attached to either end of this blank. Got a nice 7 millimeter hole right through the center of the blank. What I need to do now is cut this blank and I need to have a perfectly straight cut so that it can butt up against either end of this blank. That's going to be the tough part. I'm going to take this to my table saw. I've got a new sled. I'm going to use that sled to hold this blank steady, lock it down, and run it through the blade. Keep your fingers crossed. We'll be back in a minute to check it out and see how we did. With my blank cut in half, I've got a nice flat surface on both sides, and I'm going to go ahead now and attach that to this blank. I'll just set that there for a second. I'm going to put a little CA glue on here. Making sure we get some on the wood surface. Now we're going to slide this blank or this piece of wood on here. I'm going to twist it down tight and I'm going to hit it with a little bit of activator. Okay. Hopefully we've got a good tight fit. There we go. She finally seated. It. it was still a little, had the ability to move there until just a second ago, and it finally hit. Now what I'm going to do is glue the other end on. Let's go ahead and uh, get this doused with CA. Oop, now I'm dripping it on the lathe. That's typical for me. Okay, hold it tight. Give it a second. She still got some play in her. That is weird. Normally, it would have set by now. I hope my CA is not getting old. Ooh, yuck. That was nasty. Yeah, it's set that time. <laughs> Let me get something and clean off my mandrel where I got a little CA on it and clean my lathe off. I'll be right back. 
I got everything cleaned up. What I did is I just shot the glue that dripped down on the mandrel and the ways. I shot it with some activator, which hardened it up. Just took a razor blade and scraped it right off. Uh, you know what? Before I put this on the lathe, I'm going to take this over to the sander and I'm going to clean up both ends of this blank. Here's the blank fresh from the sander. You can see I've got a nice fit on both ends, so we're good and flush. That's important. You don't want a gap there. I did go ahead, since these were small pieces, barely a quarter of an inch, well, actually a little more than a quarter of an inch thick, I went ahead and just rounded the corners on the sander just to make it easier for me to clean this up on the lathe. I don't want to have a catch and end up blowing this thing apart. I'm ready to turn, and I do want to pay special attention to this area down here where I poke some of that um, the old shavings in and C8 them. I don't want to take a lot off right there because otherwise I'm going to take it right back down to the tube. So we'll keep an eye on that. If we do, we'll we'll address that. But the rest of it looks pretty good. So let me get my uh, my mask on, my earphones, and get my vac started, and we'll get this turned. And with that, we are ready to sand. You kind of saw the blank. Did you notice how the blank seemed kind of dark? And then as I ran the tool across it, it lightened up. What that was is my hands have gotten dirty from working with the sander and uh, holding the blank in my hand to work with the blank. I got that dirt from my hand on the blank and it darkened it up. That's one thing you want to be super careful of with these blanks, especially, I always mention it, after I run the denatured alcohol on the blank, I always like to be super careful not to touch it because I don't want to put any of that dirt back on it. What I'm going to do now is I'll turn the camera off. I'm going to go ahead and run through my sandpaper uh, and get this sanded up. I'll come back when it is sanded and we'll show you what it looks like. Got the blank sanded to 400 and I'm just going to wipe it down with some denatured alcohol. Now what I want to do is I made a mistake. I should have put my nonstick bushings on here first before I wiped it down. So I'm going to go ahead and swap out the turning bushings, get the nonsticks on here, and I'll wipe it down one more time off camera just to get any of the dirt from my fingers off of the blank. This blank has been spinning for about three minutes, and you'll notice it still has a few wet areas on it. One thing I want to point out, I'll get a lot of people who will contact me and say, hey, I, I applied CA, I used your method, I did it just like you did, but I got white spots under my CA. This right here, this can cause it. Moisture in the blank. This uh, sagebrush was extremely dry and it really absorbed that um, denatured alcohol. And until that dries, I will not put a single coat of CA on this blank. You can see it's drying better on this side. I'm just going to turn the camera off and just let this set and dry. I gave the blank about another three, maybe four minutes to dry. And as you look across the blank, notice I'm not touching it. My finger's getting close, but I refuse to touch it. There are no wet spots or damp spots on the blank, so we're ready for a CA finish. <laughs> Take a look at that. <laughs> That's beautiful. This blank is really going to be nice. The walnut was a good choice. It's a great accent and capping both ends is really going to give this pen a nice look. I'm going to go ahead now. I'm really happy that I didn't turn or sand this away uh, because you can't see the tube there, but I don't know how well you can see it in the camera. There is a little bit of a, of a divot there, a little hole. I'm going to have to take extra care to make sure that's filled, but overall I'm very happy with the blank. I'm going to go ahead and turn the camera off. We're going to apply about four more coats of thin, let it really soak in. Then we'll come back and apply, start with three coats of medium, keeping a close eye on this little, little divot here. I've got my turning bushings back on the blank, ready to start micro meshing. I ended up doing about eight coats of medium CA glue, and that was just so that I could level up that little divot. Don't want to get too aggressive. We're just trying to clean up the surface and level it out. We're not really trying to remove it. Uh, 
blank is looking really amazing. I think I flipped it whenever I removed the nonstick bushings because this is uh, the end that was down here. And I'm liking this for the nib of the pin and this for the cap because that's a little thinner and that's a little thicker. And I think it'd be just a real nice shape. I am really happy with how that looks. Let me get my buffing wheels on here and we'll buff this up. And I think it's gonna make an amazing pin. I'm going to go ahead and assemble this pin right here on the lathe and the main reason why is I want to show that I am using these number one and that they do work and number two my assembly table is loaded with blanks and pin kits so I'm trying to get some stuff ready for you guys uh, coming up in the near future. We're going to start off by pressing and I remember I did choose this end because it was a little thinner than this end to be the nib end and we're going to press this little fitting in here. Let me get, whoops, let me get everything lined up. There we go. Lock her down. Make sure we're going in straight. Whoa. I want to be really careful about that. There we go. Now we got her. I want to start crooked for some reason. I'm not sure what that was, but I'm just going to, there we go, nice and easy. Looks really good now. On the back end, or the back half of the pin, we're going to insert the clip and then the little semi-cap assembly here. I'm not sure what you would call that. What I'm gonna do is get it seated and then we're just gonna give it a just enough of a of a tap to get it started. Alright, and then we're gonna find the ideal spot, which truthfully I'm thinking is right, right about there. That way we can show all the rest of the pin. What do you think? Or maybe there? Yeah, I kind of like it there, I think. Yeah, that's my spot. Alright, let's crank her on down. Okay, she's good and tight. Now, we've got the cartridge here for the lid. We're gonna slide that in the back of the pin. We've got our nib assembly, which threads onto the front. Nice and tight. Got this little cap that goes on the back. Let me zoom out just a little bit. Well, that's as far as I can go. All right, there you go, and she works great. Beautiful pin. Sorry that the background is not as conducive as my table, but I'm very happy with how this one turned out. I'd like to thank you for joining me in the shop tonight. The sagebrush pin was fun to turn. We had a little bit of trouble, but you know what? I think we did a great job with the walnut on the front and the back. It really accents the pin nicely. I keep calling it a pen. It is actually a mechanical pencil. Very happy with it. I'd like to thank you for joining me in the shop. I want you to know that you are always welcome in my shop. Come back and see me again real soon. Take care, everybody, and have a wonderful evening.